be associated with all mysteries and will seek the bounty of witnessing the reality of every great soul. They will even manifestly behold the beauty of God in that world. Likewise, they will find all the friends of God, both those of the former and the recent times, present in the heavenly assemblage. And know thou for a certainty that in the divine worlds, the spiritual beloved ones will recognize one another and will seek union with each other, but a spiritual union. Likewise, a love that one may have entertained for anyone will not be forgotten in the world of the kingdom, nor wilt thou forget where the life thou hadst in the material world. Either that after the death of the body, the spirit perishes, is like imagining that a bird in a cage will be destroyed if the cage is broken, though the bird has nothing to fear from the destruction of the cage. Our body is like the cage, and the spirit is like the bird. We see that without the cage, this bird flies in the world of sleep. Therefore, if the cage becomes broken, the bird will continue and exist. Its feelings will be even more powerful, its perceptions greater, and its happiness increased. In truth, from hell it reaches a paradise of delights, because for the thankful birds there is no paradise greater than freedom from the cage. Assuredly, return and be gathered to the glory of the Beloved. By the righteousness of God, it shall attain such a station such as no pen can depict or tongue describe. The soul 
that hath re remained faithful to the cause of God and stood unwavering firm in his path shall, after his ascension, be possessed of such power that all the worlds which the Almighty hath created can benefit through him. Such a soul provideth at the bidding of the ideal king and the divine educator the pure leaven that leaveneth the world of being and furnish, furnisheth the power through which the arts and wonders of the world are manifest. Consider how the meal needeth of man's spirit in the divine world after the servants of its connection with the body of dust is through the bounty and grace of the Lord alone or through the intercession and sincere prayers of other human souls or through the charities and important worlds. What those worlds are and what their nature is, we cannot know. The same way the child in the matrix cannot know this world. So we cannot know what the other world is going to be. Oh my God. God of bounty and mercy, thou art that king by whose commanding word the whole creation has, hath been called into being, and thou art that all bountiful one, the doings of whose servants have never hindered him from showing forth his grace, nor have they frustrated the revelations of his bounty. Suffer this servant beseech thee to attain unto that which is the cause of his salvation in every world of thy worlds. Thou art verily the Almighty, the most powerful, the all-knowing, the all-wise. found out that who I was talking to was the French consulate from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> that was Nick. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he was the bridge builder. And uh, in my, my culture, the Lakota, he was, he was the embodiment of the four directions. And uh, I know there's a history between the Strawberry Island and all of that. And that's something that Nick was, yeah, he brought people together. He didn't separate them. And, uh, <clears throat> In his, in his honor, and I know you've been out to green grass as we have so many times to share with it. I'd like to just sing a song. Mm. It's okay. <coughs> 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 Shiva, <laughs> 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 
We've got to show them. And that stuck with me because when I read in the paper what he did when the young men had taken down some of Waswagany, mm. here's his beloved Waswagany being attacked. Mm. And he showed everybody what it is about when it comes to compassion <coughs> and learning. He saw, I, all I can figure is that he saw beyond what we, most of us see. He saw what life could be like when people did not see color of skin or they did not see all of the mm. prejudice that can come from so many different ways. He saw that <coughs> and somehow he wanted to be able to let us see that too. <coughs> And he did do There's so many things to say about Nick. Where do you start? Where do you end? There's no way. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Nick 26 years ago when I started working at his printing press and when he had the printing company out in Lac de Flambeau. I moved back to take care of my father's business when he had a heart attack and I had been a filmmaker and I didn't know what I was going to do here. <laughs> And so then I met Nick, and he had started the first magazine. I can't think of the name of it. The Charlie. Soaring Eagle. Soaring Eagle magazine, the first Ojibwe magazine in publication. And what you just said about, you know, he is a, such an educator, an educator at heart, but also a visionary. Mm -hmm. His vision went way back, and his vision went way forward. And his vision was to the heart of everything. And I, I was so struck by that. And so I had ideas. And I was so lucky that I had someone who said, you can do it. Go do it. Do it. And I'll help you. <coughs> and when the first film we did was Enduring Ways of the Lac de Flambeau, it would never have been done without Nick and Charlotte, who sat in my house till all night, till midnight or one in the morning, trying, and Charlotte with her glasses broken, tied to her head, trying to transcribe <laughs> interviews of elders. And Nick riding with me in the car at 2 in the morning because the only time we had could afford to edit would be in the middle of the night at the TV station in Wausau. I'd drive every day down there to edit and drive back and he'd carry the tapes and he'd help keep track and we did it. You know, we got it done and we never quite, I wasn't quite sure what the purpose of that film was until it was subpoenaed during the, uh, the treaty rights to represent the band in the, uh, the argument says this is how people feel about the Four Seasons and their lifestyle. It's not just about counting fish. It's about a way of life. Yeah. So that was profound. And then I had to move away and get married, which was a wonderful thing. And I moved to Minnesota to the uh, Fond du Lac Reservation. And um, I missed them. And I missed Lac de Flambeau. And I got a fantastic opportunity with PBS to do the history of the Anishinaabe, which I don't know how you could do that. It's impossible. But in a six-hour series, I thought, well, it's from pre-contact to today. How do you do that? How do you do that with no images before 1865? And Nick said, we can do it. You can do it. 
and we came here to Wiswagenin in all four seasons in the winter at 25 below zero and filmed and had to sit with cameras in cars to warm up and he would have people walking one side of the lake now you got to turn around and walk to the other side of the lake while we're filming and they'd start laughing and then he'd have them going in circles and we'd all start laughing but we got it done we got it done and I was so thrilled that he could at least receive an award for the incredible work he's done because he not only could could make it happen, he would create things thinking, how did they do this? That practical sense, how did they do it? How did they do it back then? How did they stay warm in the winter? How did they put the moss for the insulation and do different things? He figured it out. If he didn't know, he figured it out. If nobody knew, he knew how. He figured it out. And he got us through that in an amazing way that, that I don't think anyone could possibly have done a bit in so he's been a friend, he's a visionary. He said, you know, he felt like he could sit back there and have soup with the people long ago. And he brought that forward to today. He brought it in a way that made it real and made us understand there is a continuum. It doesn't end, it keeps going. And I was looking at a Tick and he gave to my daughter, a beautiful cradle board. And I said, you know, we gotta keep it going like he did. And those kids are gonna have to keep that going too. So I'm, I'm encouraged. And I'm thrilled because I know Nick's, he's not gone. All that he did, all that he taught us is just going forward. Thank you. Oh, Miigwech. Miigwech. Oh. I'm not very good at this, but I'll try. I've known Nick and Charlotte for about 15 or 20 years. They've come to my home in Eagle River and demonstrated all many, many wonderful things about Native culture. And the first time they were there, after Nick finished the peace pipe ceremony, there was this huge gush of wind. What is this all about? And then when they left, there was this enormous gush of wind. I lost my own husband three years ago, so <coughs> what Charlotte's going through. So I found a woman who can channel spirits. And she found my husband who was a character, many times for me. And I was there in June, June 3rd, and before I went there, I asked if Nick would please be there. And I never told this woman anything about Nick or anything. And she starts and, and all of a sudden she's holding her chest and, she's, and her stomach and she said, um, have you had a friend pass recently? And I said, yes. And she said, well, then it isn't Randy, my husband, who was with me all day. <coughs> it must be somebody else. And I said, yes. And there was many other parts to this, and I'll make it short. But she shut her eyes, and, she, and I asked, what does he look like? And she said, all I see is a rectangle of light. And I was waiting for feathers and bells and <laughs> I got a rectangle of light. But in a little while, she closed her eyes and she said, I'm seeing a turtle standing on its hind legs. And I knew he was there. And I asked what I could do for Charlotte and he gave us some instructions which you will hear about. And then I said, what can I do for your grandchildren? And he said, if you can find some feathers and give them to them, mm. that would be wonderful. And since that time, oh. I have found five eagle feathers. Oh. Mm. Oh. And this was the first. Oh. That's for you and Gage. And I will make you custodian of the other three. Oh. A little meditation for the, I guess for the future is a big thing we've been pondering here at Waswagany. This summer is, is missing its master builder and uh, oh, creator. <laughs> Good uh, meditation if you all would 
journey with for a moment here. We're all <laughs> building our lodge. The lodge <laughs> is us, our soul. And if you're like me, you really don't know much about building a lodge. <laughs> you're getting, you've gotten rained on a lot. You learn not to keep any metal in your lodge because if you don't make a good one, you get hit by the lightning, I guess, outside. <laughs> so you're limited. So, uh, like Clarence was saying, I really like how Clarence was saying he kind of is seeking Nick out. So we seek out master builders. We seek out people, friends, who have experience with building. Hmm. So we come across our builder and we'll call him Nick for this one. <laughs> and uh, Nick has the patience to see you make an ugly lodge. <laughs> He's got the understanding to know that you need to learn to build the lodge yourself. Yeah. That he will not be there to keep fixing <laughs> your lodge for you all the time. Mm -hmm. So he lets you make your mistakes. Mm. He points out <sighs> when you need <laughs> he points out when you made mistakes. And we're happy to have our st mistakes pointed out by our friend and, and master builder. He helps us walk through the forest to find the right, <laughs> find the right trees to pick. He knows that if we pick everyone, there won't be trees for the future, and some areas need growing. They need to grow. So you walk through and you pick because you're thinking about the generations after you and thankful for the generations before you. When you come across the right area and find that right tree with, and you cut that, you recognize its flexibility. The flexibility that we need to have in our lodges, the lodges of our heart. Baha'u'llah has a quote, he says, Thy heart is my home. And, and so, God, so, so basically it's God speaking to us. And so we, we're learning that uh, our, our lodge, you know, we want to make this good. That's a very important lodge that we're building. So that the flexibility there to in that branch to bend to open up to understanding, different understandings, to be open to new occasions and to new people to for new areas of growth. So we have unity. Well first we have to plant them. Sorry. It was kind of like, uh, I never built the lodge with Nick, but I had the bounty this week to build a lodge with a couple of the more advanced builders, Adam, Alex Kubala, and a, a guy named Doug that Nick built lodges with here. So I'm just, I'm a really a rookie lodge builder here, so I'm trying to get the process here. But uh, we firmly put those, put our branches in the ground to give us stability firm footing and the confidence. Mm. We use unity, strong string to tie those branches together. And we find the right bark, as we did the right trees, for protection of our lodges and that fire that's inside for the love of God and And as we know, Nick has 
definitely learned how to take care of his own lodge and build many lodges <laughs> through the various seasons. <coughs> and, and we clearly see that Nick has, has helped us create a village. He's created his village. And he's empowering us to build our own villages. Mm. And more than anything, I, that's a lesson that, that I've been uh, soaking in lately is for Nick to be the empowerment. To, to be even the wood on your fire. For you to be creative. <coughs> in the diverse ways in life. To be your artist, to be your, to create this beautiful masterpiece. Miigwech. <laughs> Lopsided, you know, and he just was unmerciful about the fact that we had built this crooked lodge. And, and he didn't let us forget it the rest of the time we were there. But the frosting on the cake is, I went to Indian summer, as I came walking up, Nick was sitting down and he jumped up and ran over to the lodge and did something and then he stepped away and I looked and there was a sign that said, condemned by Milwaukee <laughs> Department of Health. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he did like to play jokes on people and make fun of people. Well, I have one story of him it's during the spearing season, and I didn't want to tell it when Tom Walson was here because Tom Walson was his motorman. And Tom Walson, Nick is up in the front ready to spear, and Tom is back there motoring, and something that motor hit a rope it was and a the fence underwater. Everything stopped and Nick went flying <laughs> over. The and it was cold and he came up and he looked at Tom. What did you do? He didn't even get the top of his turtleneck wet, even though he went down under and came up. It was that fast. But that's one of the stories of Tom Malson that, of many. <laughs> All right, well, this is the end. Uh, traditionally, always, for people who've been in the teaching lodge with Nick, he always uh, did a song, the Eagle song, to drum people out uh, at the end of the time. And uh, I was thinking about this, and... I decided what we would do is we would sing the warrior song. We would drum out people with the warrior song. I don't know if you've heard Nick sing the warrior song, but uh, one verse is we see the warrior, and the second verse is we love the warrior. And what I did was add a third verse to the song. Uh, the Ojibwa do not have a word for goodbye. They say, Gigawabamamin, which means I'll see you later. So I thought the final verse, the final really, we, we do the first two verses, and when we're done with that, uh, and start in the Gigawabamin Ogichida, then we're saying, we'll see you later, warrior. And at that point, everybody should stand up and we're going to file this way so the people here come all the way around and we'll go out. We are going to have a feast that was scheduled for 5.30. It's not too long from now. I'm not sure whether it's close to being... Uh.